Have you ever wondered how the old gramophone players could play tight music? These machines are purely mechanical. There's no electric motor in them. So how could they regulate the speed of the record to keep the music from slowing down? Or from speeding up? Well, hidden inside every gramophone player is this wonderful mechanical device that can control the speed. And it's called a flyball governor. This got me thinking, if music instruments have used flyball governors to play tight music for like 100 years already, maybe I can use the same solution to play tight music on my mechanical machine. So I built this one to test out if it works. Here's my Flyball Governor prototype. It uses marbles as weights and they are connected through linkage arms to a brake disc. The brake disc can slide freely back and forth. So how does a Flyball Governor work? When the governor spins, it uses centrifugal force to push the flyballs outward. This movement causes the brake disc to move sideways. When the governor spins faster, the brake disc moves to the left. And when the governor spins slower, the brake disc moves to the right. When the brake disc can move freely left and right, the governor is doing nothing. But if we put something in the way of the brake disc, things start happening. When the brake disc pushes up against this stop, it creates friction. The faster the governor spins, the harder it pushes the brake disc to the left and the more friction is being created. The slower the governor spins, the less friction is being created. So this causes an amazing mechanical feedback loop where the speed of the rotation becomes self-regulating. When I move the brake to the right, the tempo will slow down. When I move the brake to the left, the tempo will increase. In the gramophone motor, you can see the same exact thing happening. When the brake is moved to the right, more friction is being created and the tempo slows down. Okay, here's the real question. My previous two machines failed miserably. They did not use a flyball governor and they could not play tight music. So if my new machine used a flyball governor, could it play tighter music? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in this video. To see if the governor can play tighter music, I'm going to make three tests. In test one, I'm going to test my old system where I use this air brake governor. In test two, I will test the flyball governor with the clamp handle as a brake. And in test three, I want to try to use this foam material as brake pad instead of the clamp handle. Which test do you think will play the tightest music? Well, let's find out. Here I'm recording test one, and as you can see, I'm using the air brake governor to control the tempo. This is the audio from test one. We can measure the tightness of this audio in two different ways. First, we can do it this way, where we are measuring the time between each marble hit. Now when we have our values, we want to know how much variation there is between the marble hits. And to measure that, we use standard deviation. In this case, the standard deviation is 1.2 milliseconds. But this is not the way we're going to measure music tightness today. 
Instead of measuring very short sections, we will measure longer sections to find out how much the tempo is changing over time. So here we see that the BPM is slowly accelerating over all the three minutes. We started at 158 BPM and ended at 160. The tempo change of test one was 1.2 BPM or 0.75%. Let's see if the flyball governor can do better than this in test two. After accelerating up to speed, I was really happy to see that the flyball governor was behaving as I thought it would. And the tempo felt really stable from the beginning. Let's listen a bit. I believe the flyball governor is much better, but we don't believe anymore, we verify, so let's check the data. And if we compare the BPM curve here, we can see that test two with the flyball governor is much flatter. In fact, we started the test at 124.6 BPM and we ended the test at 124.9 BPM. This is a very small tempo change, only 0.3 BPM. So. Yes, the flyball governor is much better than the air governor. But I wanted to try this foam pad. Do you think we can make the flyball governor even better than this? I really hope so. Let's try it in test three. I hope it stays here on 108. This looks really good. Come on. Yes. Now we want to see 08. Yes. Maybe the foam is better. When I was doing this test, it felt like something clicked. The Hegen drive found its tempo faster than ever. And as you can see here, even the BPM analyzer app stayed like in a tenth of a BPM for long periods of time. I had such a great feeling about this test, but feelings in all their glory, we actually don't care about them. Let's look at the data. Uh, I can hardly believe what I'm looking at here. The BPM graph is flat and we have only a tempo change of 0.1 BPM. That means that the flyball governor with foam pad is 10 times better than the air brake governor. 10 times better. Wow, I really thought the governor would be better, but 10 times better, that's like, <laughs> yes. What do you think, Wilson? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this means that the Flyball Governor is a complete breakthrough for the entire Marble Machine project. I now see a clear path to playing tight songs and tight concerts. I'm blown away by how well this worked out. Let's take a quick listen to hear how tight this is actually playing now. I mean, it sounds like a computer click. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, as I said, I thought this would work, but I'm kind of surprised how well it worked. But perhaps I shouldn't be so surprised that it worked. Some mechanical problems on my marble machine are truly unique, like the Holy Grail marble divider, for example. This is a problem that haven't been solved before because no one else had to solve it. But keeping music tempo constant, well, that's a problem that others already have solved before me. So it just makes so much sense to use this tried and tested solution for my marble machine. And I think this points out a great direction for the entire project in general, because when I have unique problems, I have to solve them from scratch. But when I have problems that others have solved, I should not try to reinvent the wheel. I should use the tried and tested solutions.
When I try to come up with my own solutions, reality often shows its ugly face and yeah, that's often painful. By using existing solutions, I will become a stronger designer. And perhaps one day I have made so much progress that I dare to fight the third marble machine in a rematch. And it feels like that day is coming closer and closer because the flyball governor just made me 10 times stronger.